What I've done now, I've switched the wheels out. 80 grits over here, 180s over here. I'm going to show you how I sharpen my rough and gouge, which is basically, I do this the same way I would do my uh, uh, bottom feeder. I would just set that to the proper angle there. Now this is at 3450. And that would be how I would sharpen that. Kind of see the grain lines on that compared to the bowl gouges, I guess, which was done on the 80 grit. I see a lot of difference in them. You know, maybe you can, you guys got better eyes. You can see they are a little bit finer, I guess. I didn't do a very good job on sharpening that one, but. Better fix it. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to the platform, and I'm going to sharpen uh, some of my other tools. One thing I didn't cover, well, I'll cover it when I get there. I'm going to switch to a platform. I'm going to use this platform right here. This is kind of a platform that a guy sent me to, to use and to try out. I've been using it for, I don't know, three, four weeks now. I kind of like it. It's uh, The way it does is you don't have to move it in and out. It, and it's uh, set up for CBN wheels, and, and it's got all the angles on here. And you just slide it to whatever angle you want. And you slide that pin through there. And the way he's got it set up is 60, like 60 there, that's 60 degrees, that's 70 degrees. And the one in the middle is uh, 65. And that's a six and that's a five the one in the middle of there would be 65 this would be 75 i guess yeah something like that i don't know his name is reed gray uh robo hippie you can look him up on youtube or you can google him you'll find him he's down in oregon but it's a uh, kind of a handy little uh deal i'm going to go ahead and use it here while we're sharpening some of this stuff uh and he's also on the uh, AAW forums. Oh, uh, so Larry can... says he's on the AAW forum, and I think he's on Sawmill Crick and Wow. Uh, I've been using it here for, uh, like I say, about a month, and it seems kind of, kind of cool. Uh, so, it's it, the nice thing about it that I like is I don't have to move this in and out. The way he's got it designed here, it uh, it just it just rotates. Uh, and he's got these little tubes underneath, so when you slide it through, there's a little tube here, so it lines up in the other hole. So it's nice to know there's smart people out there. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a scraper. Uh, kind of messed up here a little bit. What I normally do with my scrapers, I do them on the 80 grit. I like to get a nice, it raises a nice, nicer burr on the 80 grit and what it does in 180, but I've switched these wheels. I don't have it there now, so. This is my CBN hand hone, which is uh, 360 on one side, uh, 600 on the other side. So I'm just going to take that old burr off, whatever's on there. Now I've taken that one off. Uh, these are pretty easy to do. You put it there on the platform. Rotate it around, do the other side. I'm still at 34.50. I'll slow this down, 17.25, and I'll do the square in one. Uh, this is kind of for boxes. I like it because you can get down in the bottom and come across. It's less than 90 degrees. Maybe we'll, if we have time today, we'll go to lathe and use these a little bit. Now I'm at 17.25. You can hear the grinder finally kick in. To me, that's awfully slow for me now because. Uh, I'm used to the higher speeds whenever I do tools. I always go on the higher speed, so I'm going to speed it up a little bit. We're doing a video here. Uh, okay, uh, this is uh, one of my beading tools. Uh, the angle on that, 
So I rode down back here somewhere. It's 65 degrees, so we're going to switch to 65. Which should be right there. I read that right. The way I'm going to sharpen this, I'm just going to hold the flute up and go back and forth just like this. And that's how I would sharpen one of my BD tools. That's the uh, 3 sixteenths. Uh, this is the 1 8. Just looking right down on it. Simple as that. Uh, this is my diamond tool. My diamond tool, I sharpen that at uh, 75. Which should be right there. I'm going to do the same thing with it. I'm just going to hold this edge straight up. I'm going to look right down at it. Back and forth. That would be it. So I would sharpen my diamond tool. I'll show you the edge on the beading tool here. I just go ahead and leave that burr on there. I don't take that burr off. You can kind of see it's hollow ground a little bit right there, which I, that doesn't bother me at all. Uh, this is my parting tool. This is the only one I sell now. Let's see, what do I sharpen that at? Got this wrote down here. I can't read it. Parting tool is at 60 degrees. The, the deal with this parting tool is what I've done is, is I've tapered this this shaft here so it's skinnier at the top than what it is down here at the bottom so when you're parting in with this it's kind of nice because it doesn't bind up all you got is this lower edge and it doesn't bind up hardly at all uh, we'll go to the lathe if we have time today and I'll show you how to use this it's used in this position with the thick part of the tool down what you're going to do is get it against the wood and just raise the handle and follow it right in it's kind of like a duck's neck it's kind of a curve like that to sharpen it you can do this. Oops, I must have set that wrong. What did I say that was? I didn't reset that one. According to 60 degrees. So I'm just going to go back and forth like this to sharpen it. Now, if I mount the lathe and I want to touch this up a little bit, what I do is I'll just take this home like this, go across the back side. That puts me a new edge on there, right on the tip. So that's how I would sharpen that. Okay, it's my skew. I make two. Make this little one and a bigger one. I'll show you how I sharpen the big one, or the small one, excuse me. Uh, 35. So I'd be right about there. What I'm going to do is the same thing. I do one side at a time. I'm just going to hold my hand here like this and rotate it. Switch sides. Sides again. Go back and forth until I get what I want. There I have it. Now I'll take this here, my hand hone, and I'll go to the fine side of it. Take the burr off. Can you, yeah. Larry always wants me to get in these contorted positions here. And that would be how I would sharpen my skew. Now, if you want to, to get a finer edge on this, you can go to a water stone. You can go up to 6,000, 10,000, whatever you want to. But that's usually enough for me to make a reasonable cut with a skew. Uh, Spindle gouges, I uh, probably should cover that too. We haven't done that. This is my 3 8 spindle gouge. Detail gouge, what I would call a detail gouge, which is basically to let you get into really, really tight places. 
Uh, when I do my finials, this is what I use is these uh, spindle gouges ground with a really long angle on here, about 35 degrees, I think it is. Uh, I'll set up and show you how I do that. Uh, when it comes to sharpening, it's just like turning. You're going to have to practice. Um, and a lot of these movements that I showed you today, I don't know what you're doing or what you're using. Uh, but uh, you can also practice a lot of those movements with the, uh, with the grinder shut off. You know, practice them without grinding away your tool and see what you get. Uh, so spindle gouges... What I do is I come back here to uh, whatever that one, two, three, four and a half notches, which is going to give me about 35 degrees. As far as this setting here, I'm going to leave it the same. I'm not going to change it because this is what I wanted on my wings was what the setting I had here. So I'm going to go to the same stick out, which is right there. Back into the pocket. I'm going to do the same thing, one half, then the other. And then I will take the heel off. And that would be how I would sharpen a spindle gouge. how I would freehand some of these tools. Okay, so if I wanted to freehand this uh, diamond tool, what I would do with this, I would just lightly touch the heel like that, and then I'll bring it up until I can feel that I'm on that on the flat of that tool. And that's how I would sharpen that. The beading tool, I would do the same thing. This just saves me time when I'm turning so I don't set the platform. I don't have to set a platform. I would just touch that heel, bring it up here, as soon as I see those parts, I'll just give it a little, a little grind like that, and I'll be back to where I need to be. Uh, parting tool, I'll just touch that heel right there, bring it up, move it back and forth. I've got that sharp. Uh, Freehand a couple spindle gouges here, the way I do it. I'll do it the same way as I did before. I'll just look right at that edge. I'll do that half. Take off the heel. Do the other half. Take off the heel. Now it's the edge I'll have on that. Half inch spindle gouge. I'll treat it the same way. I'll do the leading edge. Take off the heel. Bigger gouge, so I'll make one more pass. Put right here. Do the leading edge. Take off the heel and take off the heel. You're going to see a bunch of little facets on there. Trust me, they don't bother me a bit. Uh, they don't, they don't, they don't interfere in anything I'm doing. The thing that does change when you do a freehand like you see me do here is I don't wind up with a hollow grind. I, I wind up with a convex grind, I guess you would call it, rather than a concave grind. Uh, what that does is when I'm turning, I can come up on this edge, and I don't have a quick, quick, because I don't come off a hollow grind. I just come up, and I'm just steering off this little tiny edge right here, this, this little bevel here. I kind of like that. Um, it kind of turns them into a sports car. Uh, they're really responsive when you just have that little tiny bevel there on the end. Uh, not for everybody, but that's what I do, so... I think that pretty much covers everything that I have. Um, oh, I didn't miss one thing. 
I'll go back to the platform. People ask me about my widget, and I'll show you what that is. And this is for sharpening all those little cutters that you um, that you have laying around that for Halloween and stuff like that. And you wind up getting uh, some sort of a manicure on your fingernails or something. This is my sharpening widget, and the way this is designed, it, it has these slots cut in the inside for the little 3 sixteenths uh, cutters that people use in their Halloween tools. And then I have this uh, thumb screw here. And this is the little cutter that I use on my Halloween tool, and this is what I use to sharpen it. I just put it in here like this. Pull it on the platform. It kind of gets my fingers away from the wheel. And that's how I use it. Uh, you can sharpen all kinds of different cutters in there. Uh, when I ship it to you, I ship it with a couple washers back here. You can take this washer off, put it back here, and then this makes this thing bigger if you want to do a quarter inch cutter or something. Makes it thicker out here, or gives you more dimension there. So that's how that works. Uh, one other thing, uh, I always get, uh, I probably should talk about that a little bit, which I didn't in the other part, is uh, there's a lot of people out there that use carbide cutters. Uh, this is a piece of carbide. This is non-magnetic. CBN is designed for magnetic or ferrous metal materials. In other words, anything that will grab with a magnet. Uh, diamonds are made for non-magnetic materials. This is uh, carbide. It won't grab it. Uh, diamonds are made for non-magnetic, for like uh, glass, ceramics, uh, pottery, carbide. Uh, so people want to know if they can touch up their little carbide cutters on here. Yes, you can. I'll show you kind of how it grinds. It's, it's not something you do want to do, uh, reshape a whole piece of carbide. Uh, find a little corner here. That, you see that corner there? think it's been ground any. You can see it does grind it pretty aggressively. What they aren't designed to be used in industrial use where you're going to use them uh, 8, 10, 12 hours a day. If you want to grind carbide then they'll have liquid cooling on them and they'll use diamond. But if you want to touch up your little carbide tools on here you, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, just don't do a whole lot of it. Alright, I think that covers sharpening.